chili peppers were first domesticated in what is now Mexico, perhaps as early as 10,000 years ago. Since then, they've spread across the globe, and have found a variety of uses. One comparatively recent use for peppers has been in the brewing of capsicmels, or pepper-infused meads. For this mead, we're using our all-purpose Red Star White Wine Yeast pouring it directly into our disinfected carboy. The yeast is then woken up by adding a cup of warm water and a bit of honey. This batch starts with a fairly standard mix. Four cups of local wildflower honey are combined with 11 cups of distilled water, stirring them together on a low heat to speed the mixing process. The peppers will be added after a two week primary fermentation, along with any additional honey we want to use to back sweeten the mix. The goal with adding the peppers late is to preserve their fresh, vibrant character, which might otherwise be affected by fermentation. One teaspoon of yeast nutrient is introduced, one quarter teaspoon at a time, over the first few days. The must is then put away in a dark place to ferment for two weeks. After two weeks of primary fermentation, the airlock has nearly completely stopped venting gas, indicating that fermentation has stalled either from the yeast running out of consumable sugar, or from producing more alcohol than they can tolerate. The yeast have fallen out of the solution to form a thick layer of lees at the bottom of the carboy. So, now for racking. I'm just going to stick this tube in. And we're going to start transferring it to a secondary vessel. With our mead racked, it's time to harvest the chili peppers. So we've got our four Serrano peppers. We're only using four because I'm loosely basing this off of a recipe that used jalapenos and used about seven of them. And Serranos are supposed to be about twice as hot as jalapenos. So it should give us a comparable level of spice, but we'll see. So in order to prepare these, we're just going to cut off the end and then cut them in half. And we're going to keep the seeds, because that is where a lot of the spice is. 
And in fact, I am just going to take a little taste here. Yep, yep, that's definitely got some heat. Not overwhelming, but that should definitely be present in the final mead. After slicing, the peppers are crushed to speed the release of their juices and oils into the mead. The peppers are then added to the mead. The batch had fermented very dry, with almost no perceptible sweetness remaining, so an additional half cup of honey has also already been added to back sweeten the mix. When all the peppers have been added to the mead, it's time to put it back in the dark for secondary fermentation. So I let it go for two weeks. As you can see, the peppers have lost a bit of their vibrant green color, but they're still pretty much intact in there. Uh, and the color has actually clarified remarkably uh, I'm going to add still a little bit of bentonite clay just to get out anything that might still be hanging in there that otherwise would just come out in the bottle, but it's really not going to take all that much. And here we have the finished product. So now we're going to give it the all-important taste test. I do like that aroma. Can definitely smell the pepper. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That is a spicy boy. Uh, it's not overpowering on that first sip, but it's definitely something you'd want to sip slowly. Yeah, I like that flavor. The pepper is a little bit less prominent than it is on the nose, but it's definitely still there. If you like spicy things, this is definitely one you'll like. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Or don't, I am not a beggar.